um, it says uh, string is fixed at both ends. It gives the mass of the string, it gives the length, and it gives you the tension. Once you have this far, I hope that's enough of a hint that the question is trying to give you enough information to calculate the wave speed which is square root of tension per linear mass density. So what you have to do is um, so, uh, work out the linear mass density of the mass of the string divided by the length of the string. So get the number, plug that in here. You should have lost as a numerical value. I just say that's worth having. There is no... Um, simplification, no, um, no, yeah, there's no benefit to keeping analytical forms here right now. So, all right, um, so you have that wave speed, that's an information you're gonna need, and then it says the string is driven by a variable frequency source to produce a standing waves on the string. Uh, find the wavelengths and frequency of the first four modes of the string standing waves and Oh, I kind of skipped over this when I first read it. So um, the reason I'm, what I was looking for, just to spell it out loud, is I was looking for boundary conditions. You have seen me use the wave on a string simulation to produce different situations where it was either node at both ends or node at, uh, node at one end and anti-node at the other end. So it's important that you are aware of the boundary condition. And this is where I'm glad to see that it says string is fixed at both ends. And that's the phrase that leads to nodes at both ends. This is an important piece of information for you to have before you start drawing the shapes of the, um, of the standing waves, which will give you the first four modes of the standing wave. So let me just sketch them. I was already sketching some earlier above. So this is the fundamental mode. This is what would be associated with uh, lambda equals one, or oh, sorry, lambda sub one, or what you would say is this length here is half of a wavelength. So lambda sub one over two, and you're given the length 2.9 meters there. All right, let me do the next uh, three. So the next higher harmonic or next mode will be one that has an extra node at the middle. And this will be the shape of the standing wave. And you can relate this with the length of the string to get the wavelength. Well, length of the string is the wavelength here. Um, next harmonic have the same fixed ends, but it now has one more extra node. So instead of one, it has two nodes in the middle. Then this is the general shape that it's gonna look like. Um, let's finish this up. And uh, last or the fourth mode will have, well, now three nodes in the middle. So uh, one, two, three, draw the shape of the standing wave. And once you have these pictures drawn, then it's uh, relatively easy to figure out uh, what the wavelength is and how that relates to the, the entire uh, length of the string. Like this is the wavelength here, and here this is the wavelength, here this is the wavelength, and so on. So once you have the wavelength, then once again you use the relationship wave speed is equal to frequency times the wavelength. This, uh, um, anticipating this is why I recommended working out the wave speed.